Right, hello world. This is my review of the PMC 25.23 speakers, hitherto referred to as 2523s. Well, hello world. All the best in hi fi reviews. Boy Marky, or just plain Mark. This is a full view. This is because somebody in one of my other videos said, oh, those don't look like PMC speakers. Well, let me assure you that they are. Um, this is just them with the grills on. Okay, they've got magnetic grills. If I take off one of them, you can see that they're most definitely PMC speakers with the ports down at the bottom. Okay, uh, let me just kind of show you around them. Here's a tweeter, just here, the top uh, uh, speaker with the grill on it. Okay, that's the mid bass driver. Down here, this is called the laminaire vent and you might just be able to make out that uh, there's a plastic sort of grill on the front which looks like it's been taken out of a Formula One racing car and that's because the idea for it came from Formula One. Now a lot of things about speakers and hi-fi in general where people like to kind of compare it to Formula One racing cars. So, uh, yeah, that's just one of them, okay? I do like these uh, speaker stands. You have to fit them yourself, but it's quite easy to do, although I wish that PMC did it for you because I would rather just like, take them out of the box and just plug them in and let them get going, but it's not too e too difficult to do. But yeah, they level from the top, which is quite nice. If you've ever had to try and level spikes in the ground by turning the speaker over and then adjusting the, the thing, it's a pain in the neck, okay? These are single wireable. Okay, I don't think any PMCs in this range are bi-wireable. I could be wrong, but I don't think they are. Um, possibly the 26 is because that's a dedicated three-way speaker but I'm, I'm not sure okay and you can see here that well it's a hope you can let's go around here a little bit you can see that they kind of tilt back a little bit okay it's not actually a cuboid shaped box it's more of a, a of a rhomboid except that a rhomboid not sure, not sure, but they, they they just lean back ever so slightly. Okay, there is a reason for that. And when I get away from this camera and get in front of my Mac, I'll show it to you uh, and explain it to you. I mean, you have another look at them there. Okay, <coughs> put this back on. See how easy that is to do one-handed. Okay, there we go. Right, I'm gonna come to the front now. Right, speakers. Now there are a number of problems which uh, speaker manufacturers have to overcome if they want to make a set of speakers that will fit into most people's domestic living arrangements. 
and not least is the fact that a speaker that will do natural sounding bass tends to be big. I'm afraid there really is no substitute for huge speaker cones like sort of 12 inch in diameter uh, speaker cones. So if you imagine a, a speaker cone that's the size of an LP record, then that's <coughs> what you really need to produce really gut-wrenching but natural sounding bass. So most people or most speaker designers have to resort to other methods to get decent sounding bass. Now, um, the kind of problem that, um, that speakers have is uh, a thing called standing waves, and I'll show you what that is. If you imagine that this is a speaker cone, okay? Now, as it fires out towards you, like that, sound waves come out that way. But they also come out of the back as well because you just can't avoid it, okay? But the problem is that if the sound waves here, which radiate out that way and that way kind of thing, if they meet with sound that's coming out of the back, boom, boom, then they cancel, cancel one another out because the sound wave that's coming out of the back is kind of the opposite. It's, it's what we call out of phase to the one at the front. And when they meet, then they'll cancel one another out and you just won't hear them. So in order to do that, speakers have to be deep from front to back because that means then that the, the, the sound wave is kind of dissolved and we're on to the next one before they actually meet because it's got further to travel. Sorry, I'm just getting loads and loads of disturbances and things from watches and phones and goodness knows what else. The way that PMC also get around it, I need the glass again. The way that PMC get around this is that front baffle. Okay, the baffle is the piece of wood that the speakers are mounted into. And as I showed you, it slants. And so the speakers slant. So now, anything that comes out that way, whoosh, like that, actually doesn't meet with sounds coming out that way. And that way, the sounds that come out of the back of the cone come round to the front and subtly reinforce the, the forward standing waves, okay? Also, I showed you the, the laminaire port down at the bottom with the plastic Formula One style grills on the front. Um, inside the speaker, base standing waves, in other words, the opposite, the, the, the base sounds that come out of the back of the cone, in other words, they're actually filtered down a tunnel inside the speaker. Now that tunnel is about three meters long. Now given that these speakers are just about a meter high, again, slightly taller than my RS5s, Um, sorry, I've got to drink coffee while I'm doing this. Can't cope otherwise. Can't cope, folks. Um, yeah, inside there is a tunnel that's folded up and it's about three metres long. And it's folded up a bit like your intestines are folded up inside you. I think if you unraveled the average human's intestines, then you'll find that you know they're, they're sort of several bus lengths long. Um, it's not quite the same. In, in here, but what, what actually happens is that as the sound waves, the bass sound waves, which are big, are filtered off and they go around the tunnel, every time they kind of turn a corner, then they're reduced in their effect to start with, but then they come round to the bottom and they're actually inverted so that they are in phase at the bottom. 
So they come out of there, and again, you've got some subtle base reinforcement. The way that Riga went about their base reinforcement was by putting on uh, two side-firing uh, base speakers, which acted a bit like subwoofers. In other words, if you took them out of the system, then the main uh, mid-bass cone unit at the front would take over the bass frequencies. Um, but uh, obviously they had these side-firing ports, which were big. Okay, they were about 5.5 inches in diameter, um, which was essentially another uh, mid base unit because I think the mid base unit was roughly about the same size. Um, at the bottom, they had a horn kind of thing, basically, a hole in the bottom, a round hole. Um, and that would also act to reinforce the base. Uh, didn't have that tunnel inside. The tunnel uh, premise is called transmission line. That's, so if you see a transmission line speaker, it means it's got a tunnel inside there. Um, so what that actually means is that the base is subtle via these PMC speakers. It's also in terms of sound quality, it's also much more integrated into the actual performance, okay? Um, now, uh, we're sort of now gonna come into kind of my audio T experience here, because um, and it, it was really hard, and this is possibly one reason why I've kind of uh, put off this review for a week or so because you know people wanted you know as I was saying on my other videos when's he going to re review these PMC speakers when's he going to review them um, and the problem that I've had is trying to kind of work out what each thing is doing because <clears throat> as you know I changed my amplifier at the same time so I actually uh, while I was waiting for the PMC speakers, I was actually trying to work out what the Illicit R was doing to the sound and then what's going to happen when the uh, PMCs arrive and what are the PMCs bringing to the party. And as I said, um, in my room, at any rate, with the Illicit R and the RS5s, the bass was better, it was a much more even bass response. Um, I talked about uh, the Arrival album and When I Kissed the Teacher, for example, which has uh, quite a difficult bass line to reproduce, at least to get it to sound even. And the RS5s managed it, but the thing about the RS5s is that in this room, because they're probably too big, for this room, um, it was really drawing attention to the bass line. In other words, uh, look at me, I can do bass. Okay, uh, there was a huge amount more detail via the Illicit R, and the Illicit R um, and the RS5s are a good speaker match and amplifier match because they kind of uh, complement one another. And, but I just felt that I needed a bigger room to kind of uh, sort it out a little bit, okay? Uh, the PMCs, despite being bigger speakers, because of that, um, because of the fact that they haven't got the, the extra bass port, they haven't, or, or sorry, the extra bass speakers and that sort of port down the bottom, the bass reinforcement is far more subtle. And what happens is that when you play music with heavy bass content, it's far more integrated into the sound of the amplifier. And I'll try and talk about some of the recordings that I've got that, um, that, that, that kind of show that. And uh, I haven't got them all round near me, so I'll have to just sort of try and do it from memory. The first record that I played on the PMCs was uh, Joan Armour Trading and her Show Some Emotion album. Okay, I've got a 
a couple of quite battered copies that are obviously a, a charity shop finds. Uh, but nevertheless, they're in they're in reasonable condition. They are they are eminently listenable, listenable, and via the PMCs, um, they don't sound so obviously loud as the RS fives. They're very sophisticated in their in their presentation and very subtle and understated. Um, which I actually like because it means that you can listen to them for an awful lot longer than a speaker that is announcing its presence and saying, look, hey, I'm a big pair of speakers. You know, these kind of melt into the room and you don't kind of think, oh, it's these speakers that are producing this. And um, the actual song, Show Some Emotion by Joan Armour Trading, has got quite a, a prominent bass line and it's quite jazzy, so you know you, you imagine brush cymbals and you know uh, 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 and sort of kick drums that are sort of on the on the syncopated beat, and you do 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 And what I noticed was that with the PMCs in place, you could actually sort of imagine the shape of the string. It just plays the tune. You know, there is no overhang, there's no bloatedness. It's, the bass is eminently tuneful. Um, vocals, if you're sort of going up into the mid-range now, uh, are very well spotlighted, but again, in a very understated way that says, turn me up a little bit, which is what I like, because it does mean that you could have these on, you could have someone round, you could be having a conversation and you could turn that down and speak over the top of them. And you, you're not constantly having this sound thrusting itself onto you. So they, so, you know, at low volumes, they're very good for background music. When you turn them up, they play to you. You know, they're, they're having fun, okay? Um, so yeah, uh, Joan Armour Trading's vocals were just beautiful, just sitting there in space. And you, you could sort of, you, you get, and, and, and this is you know, something that I noticed in Audio T as well. Um, in fact, really, I ought to kind of detail to you more of my audio T experience in a minute um, and I will but um, you, you got all the nuances of her vocals okay and you know the, the symbols at the top sizzled you know and and it created this very tense kind of um, moment of anticipation there and it's just a real thrill to listen to, even at relatively low volumes. As I say, they're so sort of laid back and understated that you just want to turn it up, okay? Um, as I say, uh, when I, uh, a couple of years ago, when I, when I just got my RS5s and therefore was not in a position to um, want to change my speakers but I went into Audio T and I, I came and I told you uh, about it but uh, they played me the 2023s which are in the range down <clears throat> but yeah the, each each um, the 25 and 23 uh, and 20 range have speakers at the same sort of points in the range as it were but uh, as I say, the LXR was having a great time with them because the LXR is a yay! I've just woken up! Wow! Fantastic! You know, let's get some music on. Let's get going. Let's you know, and they're brilliant. It's a brilliant amplifier, and I'm selling it on eBay. So I'm selling, saying nothing negative about it. Just a different presentation. Just a different presentation. And what the LXR does, which is actually better than the illicit art is stereo imaging. Um, 
yes, of course, the illicit art images, and it images quite well. And if you've never heard an Alexar do it, then you you'd be none the wiser. But um, that's that that that's what they do. The the PMC and illicit R kind of thing just sort of integrate the performance a little bit. It, the the stereo lines are, are just slightly smudged. It's nearly holographic, but it's just not quite as holographic and, and as clearly delineated as the LXR does it, okay? Um, as we know, the LXR doesn't quite do bass in the same way that the illicit R does, but, um, you know, and, and, and the treble is lovely and smooth via the illicit art, whereas it can verge on slightly more uh, bright and edgy via the Alexar. Okay, so when I went into Audio T, as I say, I took all those, um, I, I, I took all those CDs, which you saw in my last video, and the first thing that they did was played me the stand mounting 2522s via the illicit R, okay? Everything was via the illicit R, so as I say, it was, it was quite difficult to kind of gauge what I got with the Alexa and RS5s against both of those, because, you, you know, you, you'd need to sort of keep it a fair test. So it's not exactly a fair test. It was difficult, put it this way. That's why I'm going on and whatever, and I should be just a bit more focused and to the point, really, but, as I played via the 22s, Stevie Wonder, and, you know, as I say, the, um, the, the song which I really love to test hi-fi out with is Pastime Paradise, and it's also one of my favourite Stevie Wonder songs, if not my favourite. And it, even via those tiny cabinets. They've got larger bass drivers than the 23s. And you could still feel the bass in your seat. There was a certain amount of boxiness and considering that they are a stand mounted speaker, I wasn't, again, hugely impressed but by, by the stereo separation. That may be to do with the illicit R because I kind of noticed that uh, years ago when I tested the LXR next to the illicit R, um, that it didn't seem to be stereo separating in quite the same way. And I am a sucker for good stereo separation. Um, and so I then played, uh, what did I play next after that? Our oh, Cooler Shaker, Tapper and uh, Sleeping Jeeva, or Sleeping Jeeva and Tapper in that order. And I was impressed by the amount of texture and also the amount of atmosphere that the 22s managed to conjure up. And considering their size, um, there was, a, 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 a fair amount of punch and oomph, you know, particularly um, when the guitar of Tatva first comes in with that little riff, down, 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 that bit there. Um, when that first comes in, there's a certain amount of oomph, okay? And um, as I say, um, I managed to um, separate out some of, the, some of the guitar lines that are are going on in there um, and you know there were, again there's nothing in the presentation that was going to ever kind of trick the combination and this is we're still on the 22s um, there was nothing that was going to trick it into sounding harsh and edgy okay where the um, the verses come into Tatva, it can get a little bit congested and a little bit kind of, you know, just tensing you up a little bit. There's none of that. There's none of that. I was just so impressed by how smooth 
they sounded. But, you know, I was all ready to shell out some money on those speakers when I said to him, well, look, is there anything else that you think I should hear before I sort of carry on listening to these and, you know, fall in love with these? And he said, well, considering that with PMCs, with the stand mounts, you have to have the PMC stands with them. There's, there's just no way that I think they would ever sell the two separately. Um, you can't go to Richer Sounds and get a cheap pair of Atacamas for 70 quid. So the uh, PMC speaker stands are 300 quid themselves, which would have brought the price of the 22s up to the price of the 23s, more or less, okay? There's about £100 in it, but uh, he was willing to work a discount with me anyway because there were demonstration copies. So he got the 23s, and the, as I say, the 23s have got a less, a, a, a smaller uh, mid-bass unit that's only 5.5 uh, as opposed to 6 inches. Um, so you're not talking willy sizes, but, you know, there is, there is a difference there. Um, and the, um, as I say, I mean, you know, again, there's not a huge amount of difference, except that the PMCs sounded a little bit more open, the 23s, sorry, sounded a little bit more open. Um, you still had that texture there. You could still listen into the music and pick out an awful lot of detail there, which, you know, I, again, I didn't realize was there. Um, the, uh, again, the first thing I played on the 23s in the shop was Tatva and Sleeping Jeeva again. And, you know, then, you know, sort of got into my Joan Armour tradings with those uh, sort of, you know, very heavy bass lines and things and just found that it was just sort of reining it all in and controlling it. So it's there, you get the idea of what, instruments actually playing the bass but it's just not and, and, and you know trying to show you definitely look we do bass everybody you know again you know it's not but you, know, you think of your trips down to south end with the fiesta and the fluffy dice and the and the huge sound system in there playing um uh, heavy kind of rap gangster rap music kind of thing and and the and the and the bass go boom 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 and, and you've got you, you know nothing in my system was ever like that but you know you haven't got anything that is announcing look we're doing bass look we're doing bass the 23s are more open than the 22s they're also in many ways more sophisticated and less um just less announcing themselves you know again you could read into more detail and something that i've noticed at home as well which is also to do with those slanting baffles there is that I, I, I talked about the stereo imaging kind of not being quite as holographic as the LXR and the, and the RS5s. You know, they really are good, but you have to be sitting down, you have to be paying attention and, uh, and noticing it. Whereas the, because of those baffles that, that, that point upwards, um, you can actually stand up and kind of move around a little bit and you're still aware of the stereo separation. So it might not be quite as holographic, but you're getting more of the effect when you're sort of doing normal things like standing up and dancing, because I'm afraid, folks, that now, I mean, I, it, it's always been the same with me, but now I just wanna wick these up and dance to them, you know, especially during the day. I shouldn't be talking to you about them, really. You you just want to hear them and dance to them. So I've just been through tons of my vinyl collection. You know, it's even made me want to buy more vinyl. Uh, so I have uh, shelled out on a few uh, items. 
and uh, the last three albums that I bought on vinyl were uh, Daft Punk uh, I think it's just called Daft Punk it hasn't got Get Lucky on it uh, it's got One More Time it starts out with One More Time I think it's called Discovery or something like that might be, might be that might be the name of the album I don't know but I've, I've only played it once and at the moment because I've got all the stuff that I'm flogging on eBay uh, that, uh, that's been kind of replaced it's all kind of over there and I can't really get to my records all that easily anymore so you know I'm having to kind of you know, limit myself um, but yeah I've bought Daft Punk I've bought Elliot Smith um, I have got Either Or and I've got Roman Candle on CD but I wanted something on vinyl and uh, they didn't have either or on vinyl, but they had an introduction to Elliot Smith, uh, which has got a lot of the either or tracks on it. So I, I bought that and I bought Roxy Music. Um, again, I've forgotten the title, but it starts off. It's the one that starts off with Do the Strand and it's got this woman on the front with a car and uh, uh, you know, she's all clad in leather and boots and, and whatever so I can't remember what the name of that album is but yeah I've played them all all via this setup and uh, yeah you know you just want to dance you want to move you know they're, they're, it's, it's just it, it, it's wonderful you know it's exactly what this room needs in terms of its presentation really smooth there's no uh, kind of uh, edginess at all to it and I've tried to push it to the limits um, I played Alicia Keys on here uh, that uh, Road to Freedom album um, with New York on it and everything I mean that's got some huge sub bass transients on it you know that, that are going into subsonics and this lot can reproduce it it might not be to the levels that if you're you know young and into like urban music and you've got uh, you know a, a big enough room you could probably get away with having a pair of Riga RS10s or um, you know PMC 2026s or 2526s and um, you know then you know you you would get the kind of the full effect I haven't quite played Kendrick Lamar on here I might have to do that actually but you know these reproduce those deep notes but they control it and you know there's there, there's nothing there that is going to cause any offense and uh, you know one of the things you know because uh, I've you know played a, a lot of my Prince albums via this setup but um, since he died the bootleggers have been out in force and they have produced you know that there's there are now quite a lot of live Prince albums that are around and uh, this is one that arrived yesterday um, it's actually quite cheap you know uh, for a double CD which is what it is but this was uh, the 1990 concerts that um, I went to see actually uh, when he came to Wembley I, I, I actually saw this particular uh, iteration of uh, Prince's live act and you know again uh, there's uh, the Syracuse uh, at 1985 gig that's on Apple Music now uh, and, and, and the the sound from both of those albums is uh, basically sort of radio broadcast quality because that's what they were you know they, 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 they were broadcast on the radio and so you know and, and they're bootlegs so you know obviously someone very unscrupulous is cashing in on Prince's death but via these PMCs because I listened to <laughs> oh god I'm going on here I listened to the Syracuse thing from the Purple Rain tour I listened to that on my Elexar and RS5s because that's what I had at the time and 
you know, I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to irritate the neighbours, this is going to irritate the neighbours. And there's, um, there's a point in the, um, in, in the Syracuse concert where there's this huge rumble on the bass drums, you know, like that, like that, you know, and, and it's like a rumble of thunder. And I think it's supposed to be like the wrath of God or something because Prince is being overtly sexual and then God is sort of coming in and, you know, sort of saying, you know, behave yourself kind of thing. And he's saying, you know, I'm so, I am tempted, you know, that kind of thing, whatever, you know, the way Prince is kind of thing. And it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. But, you know, these things did it with the illicit R, sorry, yeah, the illicit R as well. And yeah, you got all the force of that, of, of that huge rumble, but none of the edginess, none of the, of, of the kind of, ooh, you know, I must turn it down because it just, oh God, it, it, it's, it's just divine. It's just divine, you know, uh, and it's, it's very hard to kind of, um, sort of pinpoint exactly what it is but you know it, it, it it's just wonderful folks so I'm gonna kind of end this review here because otherwise I could just go on and on and on forever you know talking about what I'm what I'm listening to but put it this way you know, the final thing that I'll say about it is that one of the albums that you know I've had and you know since the late 90s when it came out. I'll get it for you because I can see it. Is this album here. And it's Shaq's HMS Fable album. Brilliant album. Absolutely brilliant. I've listened to this on all kinds of setups from uh, my realistic CD player with uh, Rotel's uh, amp and Wharfdale speakers through to this lot that I've got here now. Via the, you know, the, the, the kind of really cheap and nasty systems, you know, from uh, PC World, not, I don't mean PC World, Comic, as it was in those days. I don't know whether the comet's still there now, but anyway, um, via that lot, this was almost unlistenable, particularly at high volumes. It gets to sound on anything decent, like a pub gig. On this one, on this setup here, it sounds like a pub gig still, but with an engineer that kind of knows what they're doing. Okay, it's just, just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So if you ever get the chance to, you know, go and hear these PMC speakers, obviously the rest of the ancillaries will play their part in it, but it really goes very, very well with the illicit R because it controls that bass, but also gives you, um, a, 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 a real window into the quality of that bass, you know, exactly what's happening. It plays the tune. It's just so tuneful and so tightly rhythmic that, you know, it, it's just amazing. And it just makes you want to turn it up and go uh, and, and just wallow it. And when you do turn it up, you've got no no edginess or overhang whatsoever and that is where I will kind of end the lesson I'm sure that in five ten years time maybe I'll come back with whatever system that I've got you know maybe Riga will have made an amplifier that it doesn't break the bank but it sits in between the illicit R and the um, Osiris and maybe I'll come back and I'll wax lyrical about those and just, you know, get all excited again. And maybe I'll say the same things because that's what you do with, with hi-fi, you know. Yes, there's 
you know, levels of performance, but it's very hard to kind of describe it and put it into words. You've just got to listen. You've just got to listen and, you know, the thing about this system is that it just makes you want to listen all day, you know, whether it's via CD, which, you know, in the past, the CD has always been a problem reproducing because of the inherent kind of forwardness and brightness about the medium, you know. Vinyl, you know, you never really have a problem reproducing vinyl. You know, you could, you could get a, you know, a relatively cheap system consisting of, you know, a uh, sort of 400 pound project player and, you know, a, a Cambridge amp for 300 quid, 350 quid maybe, and a pair of uh, mission speakers, something like that, for 150, 200 quid. You've got no problem playing vinyl because the inherent sound of vinyl is so good that it only takes a very modest system to kind of show it off. Obviously, as you go up in the ranges, you suddenly start noticing that vinyl does real bass. You suddenly start noticing that all the detail that um, vinyl is capable of, of throwing out at you. And also the kind of life that, that it has, it has a kind of life of its own. CD has always been much harder to, um, to pr reproduce um, with the same level of engagement and the same level of, uh, 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 of you know, niceness and tonal quality. The Saturn R as a CD player really pulls it off. And again, that's pulled it off in you know relatively sort of with with relatively low end uh, ancillaries to it, but um, you know I've I've heard even even um, that even with R three speakers and it just you know boom, really cool. So anyway, yeah, I'm 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 ending the lesson now because I'm going on. All right, just I'm just immensely happy with these speakers. Okay, so I will put this video together, try and edit out some of my ums and errs and things like that, and then I'll get it up and you'll be able to listen to me, folks. See you later. Bye.